The difference between a Christian and a non-Christian should be clear as crystal, the former being one who believes in God and the latter one who doesn't. This simply means our views and principles should also differ. As Christians, we are in this world but are not of this world. Hence, our lives' principles, thought patterns, and views on things should not be based on worldly things. James 4.4 You adulterous people, don't you know that friendship with the world is hatred towards God? Anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. Romans 12.2 Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. That being said, a Christian view of money should be based on our manual for Christian living, the Bible. The scriptures provided us with ways we should view and handle money as Christians. Here are some of them. Money should not be the primary goal. Now money as we know is a means of exchange for goods and services in our world. And it has been so from way back down to the Bible days. People in biblical days made use of money in its different forms to pay for goods and services. Hence money is important to everyone, Christians and non-Christians alike. And having it is not a sin. However, it becomes sinful when it becomes an idol and takes the place of God in our lives. When pursuit for it becomes a priority and we lose sight of God. As Christians, the scriptures advise us to seek God first. Serving and glorifying Him should be the priority and every other thing including money should be secondary. Matthew 16, 19-21 I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven and whatever you lose on earth will be lost in heaven. Then he warned his disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Christ. From that time on Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders, chief priests and teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and on the third day be raised to life. When acquiring material wealth becomes one's primary goal in life, it has a way of shifting its focus from what is actually important and external. Luke 12, 15 Then he said to them, Watch out. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed. A man's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. Matthew 6, 24 No one can serve two masters. Either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Matthew 6, 33 But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. Jesus and some other men in the Bible set an example for us as believers by seeking God first, and they were all exalted in due time. There were also examples of men who made wealth and money primary, and it all ended in ruins. John 5.19 Jesus gave them this answer. I tell you the truth, the Son can do nothing by himself. He can do only what he sees his Father doing. Because whatever the Father does, the Son also does. Philippians 2, 5-9 Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name. Living and fulfilling God's purpose for our lives should be our goals as Christians. How does God want us to prosper? 3 John 1-2 Dear friend, I pray that you may enjoy good health and that all may go well with you, even as your soul is getting along well. God indeed wants us to prosper as his children, but how? This prosperity is not streamlined to just having lots and lots of money as we think it to be, as financial prosperity is just one of the many types of prosperity. God's view of prosperity for us as believers is eternal, and that is why He wants us to pursue things that would lead to that. Joshua 1, 7-8 Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Acknowledge God as a source of wealth. 
As Christians, we must know that God is the one behind our wealth and achievements. Taking note of this helps us keep our focus on Him. We should learn to be content with what He has blessed us with and also be a blessing to others around us through it. 1 Timothy 6, 6-9 But godliness with contentment is great gain, for we brought nothing into the world, and we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with that. People who want to get rich fall into temptation and a trap and into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge men into ruin and destruction. In summary, money is not evil. It is a love for it that is. 1 Timothy 6, 10-12 For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. But you, man of God, flee from all this and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness. Fight the good fight of the faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called when you made your good confession in the presence of many witnesses. We like to know what you think about money as a Christian. Also like, share, and subscribe for more amazing content. Stay blessed.